In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the Spring Tools for, together with our Eclipse IDE, to start building Spring-based applications. So here in my screen, I have a vanilla Eclipse IDE installed, no plugins whatsoever, uh, freshly download, downloaded from Eclipse's website. Now to install plugins, the simplest way is to go to the Eclipse Marketplace. Now the I'm currently using Linux, but for other platforms, the, the menu navigation of Eclipse IDE is relatively the same. So the marketplace for Eclipse can be found under the help menu and under a section called Eclipse Marketplace. Now what we have to do is to search for the STS tool or Spring Tool Suite by just typing in STS in the search box. However, we'll notice that there are several tools available in the marketplace. What we want is the version 4, as of this video, Spring Tools 4, or aka Spring Tools Suite 4. So you can just click install. To then proceed to download the necessary plugin packages for your Eclipse IDE. Now again, this option is only available for those who have an existing Eclipse IDE. Um, you also have the option to download the Spring Tools for STS package from um, Spring's website that includes the Eclipse IDE already bundled with Spring STS. So now we just hit confirm. Okay, it will proceed to download the dependencies as well as other packages required by this particular plugin. Make sure to accept the terms of license and agreements. And once you hit finish, you can notice on the lower right part of your Eclipse IDE, it will indicate there the progress until the plugin is installed in your computer, or rather in your IDE. You can also click the um, the green, green bar right here to show the progress in a progress panel within Eclipse. You'll then be prompted to restart Eclipse after the installation has finished. So we can just hit restart now. Once your IDE is loaded, you should notice several changes. As you can see on the top here, on the top panel right here, you'll see the tools that will be used later on for running Eclipse-based um, applications, notably the boot dashboard represented by the green, green button right here, as well as the menu templates for creating a Spring-based or a Spring-based application using Spring Boot. So for example, if we can create a new package, we can select Other, and we should see an option here called Spring Boot. And just to create a starter project, we can select Spring Starter Project. And what this essentially does is that it visits a site called start.spring.io, which contains the necessary templates for creating Spring-based projects. So for example, let's say I wanted to create a project called Address Book. I can type in the name there, provide the necessary uh, Java-based parameters for creating a typical Java application. In this case, I will name my group com.example, leave it as is, and the package will be named com.example.addressbook. I'll hit next. Now, optionally, when we create a Spring-based application based on Spring Boot, we can integrate other libraries as well before having to build the initial project. So for example, let's say I wanted to integrate MySQL. I can just search for MySQL and it will already include the MySQL driver. In the case of web-based applications, I can search for Spring MVC or simply MVC. And under the web section, you notice that it has a Spring Web, which will allow you to integrate the necessary web MVC components in your Spring-based application. You can hit next. 
And what this tool does is that it essentially creates a link towards start.spring.io with the parameters that we just mentioned earlier, and it will proceed to download the template for that particular project. Notice that the default build tool being used by Spring Boot is Maven. So as the download progresses, you can check out your project and notice that we have a pom.xml file that holds the necessary dependencies such as the one that we included earlier. Just to examine and verify it, we can click on that file. Under the XML view, you should be able to notice that it included Things like the Spring Boot Starter Web Artifact, which contains the necessary libraries and dependencies for creating Spring-based MVC applications, as well as our MySQL connector um, driver library to connect to a MySQL database. Okay, now that we have everything set up, let's try to verify if we can run this Spring-based application. The nice thing about Spring Boot is that it already comes with an embedded Tomcat server, so you don't have to download the Tomcat server separate from your Spring Boot installation. We run the application several ways. One, of the, one way is to right-click on the project, say Run As, and we can run it as a Spring Boot app. Okay. You'll notice that in the console, it will start off the Spring Boot text, and in the logs, you'll see that it will initialize a Tomcat server running on port 8080. So if you go to our browser, say Firefox, and we visit localhost 8080, you can see that the application is now currently running. Just to verify this, we can stop our server by hitting the stop button right here. And if we visit our server, we can see that the server is now currently down. Now, everything has been configured for us in a single file called address book application, which is sort of the Spring Boot way on bootstrapping your Spring-based application. Just to verify that we have indeed configured this as a Spring application, and we can use the Spring MVC libraries that we added earlier on, we can create a, another class, and let's just call this pages controller. And I'll go ahead and annotate this with at controller for it to be registered as a spring-based app or a spring-based controller. So we import the appropriate libraries or dependencies and packages. And I'll put in another annotation called response body. I'll create two functions that return a string, let's say one for index, and it will just return hello world, and another one for, let's say about, so let's say I have an about page. And what we'd like to do is that we'd like to add mappings to these sort of endpoints within, these, within this controller that we specified. And we can do so by annotating our methods with at request mapping. Make sure to import the dependencies. Okay, so this one maps to our root URL. And the second method, let's say we map it to our about page given by slash about. Okay. Once we have that set up, we can run our Spring-based application again by right-clicking on the project and run as Spring Boot app. Or we can also run it as a Java application. So in this in this uh, routine, I will run it as a simple Java application, which in turn will ask you to specify the Java, the entry point of your Java-based application. In my case, that would be the address book application that we have right here, which in turn will read that annotation and proceed to the same procedure as if you were running a Spring Boot app-based application. So it will run our Tomcat server on port 8080, so we can open up our, our browser again, refresh this, and you can see that it's now running our first endpoint for Hello World. If you change the URL to About, you can see that it ran the uh, About page, which is currently hooked to our method 
about right here under pages controller. Okay, so this verified that we can indeed run our Spring Boot based application. Now in terms of deployment, we can actually run this application as a standalone application by first compiling it using Maven. We do so by right clicking the project again, run as, and this time we run Maven build. I already run th ran this previously, but if it asks for a goal, what you can put in the goal is a package and it will automatically package your application for you into a jar file. which in turn can be located under a directory called target in the root directory of your project, in this case, address book. Now, just to verify that, I'm going to open up another terminal and navigate to that location. Let's say in this case, under my home directory, Eclipse workspace, address book target, and if you notice here that it already created a jar file for us called address book snapshot.jar. We can run it by our typical Java command, specify the flag jar, and our file address book 0.0.1 snapshot.jar. Once we run this, okay, you can see that port 8080 is already in use because I forgot to stop the server right there. Okay, so it stops the Tomcat server from Eclipse. And let's go ahead and try to run it again. So it's the same command. java-jar address book 0.0.1 snapshot.jar. Okay, it will automatically read the class that contains the Spring Boot context or the annotation called Spring Boot Application and run the embedded Tomcat server as well. Okay, so now we can have it running at port 8080. Once we visit our browser, then it's the same result as earlier. Okay. So in summary, what we can see here is that we can set up a, or we can bootstrap a Spring-based application easily with Spring Boot and have it integrated in our Eclipse IDE via the Spring marketplace or via the Eclipse marketplace and download the Spring STS version 4 suite. Okay. So that's it for this video for setting up your Eclipse IDE with Spring STS.